Hey guys, how you guys doing today? <clears throat> okay, I get asked this so much and I actually just did a giveaway um, last week. I'm gonna cut this, tear this off here. Um, I just did a giveaway, not last week, it was, I mailed it last week because I was running late on it, but um, about my mixed media papers that I make. Um, I had one of my live shows and um, Susan won, so I sent her my um, papers and that I had made because um, I was with a company and prior, a year and a half ago or so, and uh, I had made papers. I had made 10, I was selling 10 papers, mixed media papers for $3. And I think, I believe I did it for three or four months and um, had you know, would make papers, put it in a PDF, then people could buy them and download them, um, and use them. And, um, so that's, that's what I did. And I showed the papers and I, um, have shown them before, but I got so many people wanting to know how to make these papers, which I'm sure when you see how to make it, you will, your mind will go crazy and you will just you know, knock it out of the park. It's very simple. Um, especially if my table was cleaned off. Um, it's very simple and I like it. I love scrapbook paper anyway, but I like it because, um, you can kind of, if you're doing a project, like if you're doing a mixed media project or you're making, I don't make cards, but if you make cards or you, uh, want to do a gift for somebody, um, you know, I mean, it's endless what you can do. You can make your own papers that match what you're doing. So I love making these. These are way more therapeutic for me to make than going and picking papers. Although I can't pass up Halloween time because I love me some creepy papers and some skulls and all that kind of crazy stuff. And I love creepy trees, dead trees, but that's a whole other weird part of me that we don't need to discuss. So, um, those of you who know me well enough know I dig the trees. So I wanted to show a few things um, that I do and how I do it. And, you know, I would love if y'all did it, you know, while you watch this or if you, um, like, it looks like something that you would like to do or something like that, that you guys would do it and, you know, tag me in it on Facebook or show me or something because I love, you, you guys all um, inspire me. I watch uh, certain people, um, Sigrid uh, Sota, I call her Sigrid, <laughs> but I say her name, she knows who she is. I will sometimes, I've been having a hard health time lately, time, hard time with my health lately, and um, so I'll just sit in here sometimes and just watch her, like, because her videos, you know, she'll have like part one, part two, whatever, and um, I'll just sit and watch them and just like veg out, or I'll watch other, there's a lot of people I watch. Um, frugal crafter is another one. I'll watch her, um, sometimes on things that I have no interest in doing, like making cards or, you know, certain whatever. Um, I'll, I just sit because to me, it, it inspires me in a different way. I'm not going to go make that card, but, um, it, it's just, it's calming to me. I'm a wacko. I know, but, um, you know, or sometimes I'll just sit here and create and draw and play and watch the videos. Anyway, um, you know, there's certain go-to people I go to, like when I need certain, um, mindlessness, if that makes sense or comfort or, you know, whatever. So anyway, and there's a lot of you that I know, uh, that are just starting your YouTubes and that kind of thing. So of course I'm subbing to you guys too. I like to sub back to people who sub to me. Um, so I don't know. I just think it's fun. Okay, here we go. All right. So first what I'm going to do is I have a piece of mixed media paper and I don't want this to go out of focus. Um, this is from, oh, what book is this from? It's either Canson mixed media paper or what's the other one? Strathmore. I think it's the blue one. Canson. Yeah. Yeah. It's from Canson. I buy Canson or I will buy the Strathmore mixed media paper. I don't care. Um, you can do this on any kind of paper that you want because ultimately what ends up happening, as long as you use a ink that is, um, 
water resistant, you know, waterproof, uh, like stays on or archival ink or whatever, um, you're good to go because we're going to use acrylic paint on this. Now, do you have to use acrylic paint? No, you can use whatever you want. But if you're going to make a set of like, I think it's fantastic to make gifts for people. And like in, in the group, in all things creative and in, in my group, you know, we have a random act of kindness list. And I mean, you know, for, for, I get random acts of kindness and I know other people that get them and, you know, it's just so nice to like open the box, you know, your post off, get, get your mail and have like a random act of kindness in there. So this is something cool that you can do as a random act of kindness for somebody that isn't going to cost you money. Um, but to mail it and that you also don't have to do a big piece like this. You can take this, cut it in half and do smaller ones. It doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? It's just fun to do and to let somebody know, because we know nowadays money's tight and, you know, not everybody has money that they can, you know, go out and buy things. You know, you know what I mean? So this is like a very from the heart gift. I'm one of them people who love like from the heart gifts. I mean, I'd like a nice big kiln if anybody loves me that much, but uh, you know, other than that, um, you know, I keep telling my husband, well, if you loved me, but uh, you know, I don't have a place for a kiln right now. Anyway, he'd have to clean out the garage and then that's a whole other fight over that. So um, you're going to hear Darth Vader behind me. That's my husband's dog, Cubby. Poor thing. He's uh, a hot mess. He's uh, one of our rescues. He has like three teeth and this weather, I think it's like so humid here. Like you walk out the door and like, you know, you like get completely sweaty. Um, but he's behind me breathing like Darth Vader and I'm watching him while my husband puts up my exercise pool so I can... <sighs> exercise a little bit. We'll see. Okay. But anyway, here we go. I know I'm going to get a comment. So I'm going to say, do you have to talk so much? Yes, I do. Um, and I have no idea who the hell's calling me on that. Okay. So I only see if it's my husband cause he's outside. I can wave to him from the window. Hello. But he enjoys his headphones and his peace and quiet. So I shall leave him be. So I'm just going to use archival ink. If you don't have it, use a black acrylic paint. It does not matter. Um, I'll do another one with, with, a black acrylic paint if um y'all need you know like I'll do another page at another video but um now I don't know how much ink is left in here but I did do the frugal crafters glycerin little tip thing I don't know if it's going to work because then I remembered um and then somebody a very nice um person reminded me that I could that they're like I thought you watched the Frugal Crafter. She uses gouache. And I was like, that's right, gouache. And so anyway, so I did kind of like um, do the um, glycerin on here. So let's see if it reactivated any ink. I wouldn't be surprised if all the ink was out of this. However, let's start. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take whatever color you want, um, whatever stamp pad you have. And what I like to do, and this was one that I kind of did. And we're going to just get some ink on here. And I start, you know, let's say we want to use this as a piece. You're, you're sending a kit for somebody. And my camera's kind of funkified off because I'm at a crooked angle. If I cleaned, it would be good in here. I would be right on, right on this money. Okay. All right. Okay. Now. All right. Okay. So let's pretend like we're going to do... And you see how that stamps, now obviously the black ink's running out, so you would use a darker one, or you don't have to. It could be more of a grunge. Um, this could be like a like a uh, letterhead, so to say. You know, like a letter. Or to journal on. And again, you can cut this piece in half and do what you want. So I'm just going to go down. And then just that little bit right here. And I'm not making it as even or whatever as, you know, I want it to be. You know, I would probably take a little bit more time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom half and pretend like I got this in half, let's say. And I'm just going to take this and just use my stamp all the way around. And then do this. Okay, and of course, you guys would take more time. So now you see we have two, you know, if we would have cut this in half, let's pretend it's equal. Okay, all right. 
And I will take, I do this, I do it as a superstition-y kind of thing, but even though I'm using archival or stays on or whatever, I hit it with the heat gun because I want to make sure it's dry in all the layers, or all the fibers of the paper, rather. It might be just a psychotic OCD thing I have. And if it is, oh well. And now is when the fun begins. So down here we have this and up here we have that. So you go and you pick, like I'm gonna try these silks that I had showed you. But I think I'm gonna do, I love this color. Maybe we'll do a pink and, we'll do pink and purple. Okay. And I'm just gonna take a paintbrush and it doesn't matter what kind of paintbrush you have. And we'll do this bottom one down here first. And I'm just gonna dip my brush in. I didn't wet my brush, but you definitely can if you want. That's like syrupy. Okay. And this is my fast version of this. Like I said, it's so much fun to sit and do these and give them to people because you know, you're making, like, not everybody can go and buy, like, you know, the big pads of paper or, you know, I'm like a clearance junkie. So, like, when they have, like, papers on sale, because I do mixed media, a lot of the time, it doesn't matter really what the subject of the paper on sale is. I'm using a little bit of this because I've never used these before. So, I want to see what they're like. I want a little bit more water just to thin it out a little bit so I'll have to go in again for more paint. Okay. So. Now we see the undercoat. Like I said, you will be much more, uh, much. And of course, always put your lid back on because you don't want to pull Kelly and it end up all over you. And let's say for this, we want, let's just use a regular color paint. Lay down, Cubby. Don't, Daddy will be in. Let's use uh, some yellow. This is a uh, primary yellow from Basics Liquitex. I'm almost out of it and I'm gonna plop some of that on there. And I'm not gonna clean my brush of that magenta. I really don't care because I like the And you can see the black's not smearing. So like I said, if you don't have a, if you don't have a um, permanent ink pad, and it's okay, I'm going over the bottom part. It doesn't matter. But if you don't have a permanent ink pad, you can just use, you know, whatever color paint you want, acrylic paint. I'm gonna wet this a little bit just to get this going a little bit more. This is much thicker than the other paints. So I'm just adding a little bit of water. And what I would do when I would do these kits is um, go with a theme. So like for December, it was like all like basically this, not the same color, but in the same color family. Like I would do like at Christmas, I didn't, I don't recall. I think I did um, all kinds of different blues and uh, gold, silver, that kind of thing. So you can see, and like I said, if you get down at any point, even when you're just doing in your art journal, you know, you don't have to plop more paint on there. Just wet your brush a little bit because it'll just make it go that little bit extra where you don't have to, you know, go for more paint. And when you're stamping and you want these stamps on the side, now you can do it completely opposite of what I just did and stamp after you paint. It's up to you. So that's that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit it with the, you would be much more, um, you know, you would do it slower and take your time and do your thing. Up some. And what I'm going to do is 
See, this is dry, this one already, which is awesome. But I'm just going to cut, and I'm going to cut it. Now, if you have a paper cutter, that would be great because you can um, make sure it's straight and all. I'm, you know, I'm one of them girls that, I mean, if I'm making it for somebody, then I would, uh, I would try to measure. <laughs> I can't promise anything. Okay, so like, so here we, we don't need that either. Okay, all right. Everything's going crazy. All right, so that's the start of our mixed media papers. Now, like I said, you can do one this size and you can do one this size. This is still wet, so I want to give it a minute. But like for ATCs and twinchies and stuff, you're starting up here. Now, you can see the color and you can see the stamping underneath, but it's not coming through too much. Now, what I would do is I would take... Let me, this is a uh, red. I got these from Blitzy. I love when Blitzy has sales. I'm a Blitzy freak. Um, this is just color box and I'm gonna open it up. And on this one, I think, and I'll probably do it on the yellow too, but I'm gonna set that yellow right there. I'm gonna set this here. I'm gonna bring my camera down a little bit more. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. I really got to clean in here this weekend. Okay. Now I love like this, like that's coming off on that. And if, I don't know if it's still wet or not. Let's see. I'm going to take my brush and just kind of like, got still got some more yellow in there. But I'm going to go in here and let's see if it is a little bit more wet. A little bit still wet rather and pull some of that down so we get more of that color in there. And you don't have to pull it down everywhere, but it'll just give it more of a, you know, I don't know, like a variegated look. All right, and then we'll dry this real quick. It's mostly water. Oh, the stuff, the papers that you can make. And I've shown my papers many, many times, and I will be glad to send you a PDF of them. Um, just let me know, you know, just let me have your uh, email address and I'll send them to you. They are, you you know, you use them, you print them out. I like to print them out on cardstock because um, for me, cardstock doesn't run. Because if, unless you have a, a uh, ink, I mean, a um, laser printer, laser colored printer, you're not going to uh, really, the ink's going to run. But if you print it out on cardstock, which is what I, I do, um, it soaks more into the fibers of the paper. And it's not as, like, you can go over it if it's wet a little bit and it won't run. Rather, if you... Uh, use printer paper, which is very, very thin. And the ink for some reason sits on top because there's really, it's so thin. But when you're using acrylic paints like this and, and, and uh, ink that doesn't move, so to say, you uh, don't have an issue. So I'm gonna put some red and I'm just gonna like kinda plot it all over and not worry about where I got it. This is called Red Devil. And I'm just going to kind of lay it down, push it down, over here, not worrying if it's, you know, on, not on, whatever. But you see how you get like another view on that? And you got that underneath, and then you got the different colors, and then you got the top part. And then even with my yellow, I think it's a little still wet, but let's try it. Or you can stamp on the paper, whatever way you guys like to do your stamping. Yeah, some of it was still. But you see how you get? You get these really cool. And it doesn't matter that they don't match because it's paper. Now, what do I want? Let me wipe this off. If I could find my water bottle, water bottle. I 
I just don't want that acrylic paint to dry. I usually don't clean off my stamps with uh, ink, you know, like when I'm stamping. But when there's acrylic paint, when I use it, I don't want it to get in the cracks. So I'm going to set him over there. And we can go on. We can use some of our on the lid and go and where we see, I mean, you're just adding more and more texture, whatever you're doing. You can use a toothpaste lid. You can do whatever you want. We're just spreading some of that red. All right, now I'm just gonna get the rest of that off. And then let's say you want another color on it. Or you want to stick with black because, you know, the black underneath is, isn't as dark as it was. But you want a different kind of stamp. Or you want to bring out that maybe you like that more and we don't have it up here. Now this, if you were keeping this as a piece of paper, obviously you would not do this part. Because this is where they would be journaling. So this could be the cover or whatever. But I'm just showing you different ways to stamp and do what you want to do. Like I said, this is another piece. I would probably, sure got my other black, I'll do dark green. All right, this is just dark green and I'm gonna go in and just pat it on there and I'm gonna turn it sideways. And I'm just using stamps that I've sitting here. And just kind of stamping. And then if I have any ink left on this, I will go on here because we're now making this a piece of paper. See, it's wet in the middle there. And then I'll wipe this off because yellow is not wanting to dry today. I'll just hit it with the gun. And like I said, just with one piece, you have two different pieces here that you can work with. Now, here's one of the things I did that I love doing with um, one of the other pieces. Now this I'll definitely use because it got all this great texture and all to lay down on um, backgrounds and whatnot. But what one of the things I did was I took, I'm just going to kind of dab this yellow right here. There's like one little pile of yellow that just doesn't want to dry. Okay. So one of the things I did was I took water and I squirted it on paper. And I love this one. And I love the one, this the, the way this scans out. And I kind of Crumble that. And I'll just like wipe up the water that's on here. Give it maybe little squirts from this side and a little squirt from that side. Crumble it up. And then, of course, you want all your paint to be dry. Who knows if mine is or not. And then I open it back up and I let it dry. Okay, so I'll take it, you know, overnight, like I'll do it before I, you know, I'm done in my room or whatever, do a bunch of them and let them dry. And then once they're dry, I will, and it'll straighten up. And you can go back and you can straighten this up a little bit more if you want it straightened up. I like all the little things because when it's dry, I take my black. Or you could do your red or whatever color that you want. I'm just going to get some of that water off. And this is just the basic of how to do it. Then you can take, I don't have a black that I want to use. I'll just use my dark green again. 
And on all these pieces that are like sitting up, you just go over with a dark color. And it gives it this really cool, I mean, you're like barely going over these raised areas. You can go on the ends. I mean, you can do whatever you want. And I'm very lightly doing this. And this is dark green, so it's not even like it's black. So you don't have to. And if you don't have, uh, what's it called, uh, ink pads, use, use a dry brush and use acrylic paint. It doesn't matter. And I just kind of go like that. And then leave it dry. And it comes out so cool after it fully dries. And then you have like this really cool piece of paper that uh, has all these different variations of like, this is more of a grunge, but let's see. See how it picks all that up? And it's just great paper. And like I said, when it's dry, then you can, you know, you can make a whole set of these for somebody and send it as a random act of kindness, or I use these myself. And, you know, you rip it up or you can use this as a background in your art journal. You can do whatever you want with it. Now, let's set these over here and do... And you can use cardstock to uh, get another piece of paper. I'll do this paper. I'll cut it in half to show you. And I think uh, the Canson gives you those edges. So if you want to keep it in the book or take it out, you can take it out. So let's say we want to use paint um, on our stamps. Maybe we'll use this one. If you use watercolor paint, watercolor paint will not dry uh, permanent. So I wouldn't advise that. But if you want to use it and you are kind of knowing what you're, where you're going to put your and you kind of know where you're going to put your, uh, you know, if you're using watercolor, but you know you're not going to wet it like I did over all of it or anything like that, by all means, do. Do use it. I'm going to get my paintbrush. Draw my paintbrush. And I'm going to take just some acrylic paint. This is a pink color. Uh, come on now. Valentine pink and I'm going to just put a little bit out on my thing on my mat and I'm going to wet my brush and I'm just going to take it down slightly and you can make it as heavy as dark as whatever you want it to be and I like I don't like all the uniformity some people do and I say good for you Put that there. I'm gonna put my paper over it and I'm just going in and I'm starting in the middle. Now what you can do is if you have a die, I mean a uh, stamp this this size and I'll show you once I come back because we know we, I didn't put paint all over it but you see how we did we got that. Now you can just use this and cut this piece out if you would you know if you put this on straighter um, and then that could just be your piece, part of your piece right there. For me, I'm going to continue going on, but I'm going to use uh, acrylic paint. So I'm just going to draw, you know, wipe this off, get that paint off there. Okay. Because you really just don't want that paint drawing in there. And what other kind of stamps do I have here? All right, so you can use, I have tons of these flowers that come in all kinds of different things. I can use that, I can use this. You can use, you know, if you have a spray, it doesn't matter. 
let's say we want to use, I'm sticking that. Let's go a darker pink and just put this right here. Just a little bit of a darker pink. Then put it on my brush. And we'll say we'll take this and I'm just gonna go opposite of what the uh, put this on. Now, if you want the whole flower, do the whole flower. If you just want certain patterns, I'm gonna keep that tip empty there for me. I'm gonna brush it on and then I'm just gonna press. And it's just given, I'm not going for the flower look, I'm just going for some color and some uh, more texture. And I'll put some more on there. I love these things. They're so inexpensive at the, in the kids section. They come in humongous sizes, little sizes. I love them all. And I'll use another one when I'm done. Again, we're just adding, adding texture, texture, texture. So when you rip it up, you have delicious texture and everything. You can do in this. This is just cardboard. We all have cardboard, the corrugated cardboard. Put it on there and just push it down. We'll push it here. And you see how you're just, and if you use different colors, you stay in the same family. If you want to, if you're afraid that you're going to like muddy, like the colors, then, you know, leave things dry before you put another color on. And again, you, you know, this you can turn 20 different ways, but you can still see the color underneath that we originally started with, which is the light pink. Now, let's say you want to go on to spray and we're almost done. So I'm going to take, this is Radiant Rain Shimmering Mist. Ooh, from Luminart and it's the new non-clog. And I'm just going to spray some yellow over that. And it changes the whole look. I love it. There's no clog. And you see? I don't know why my lighting's really off today. But if I see, like, over here, like, oh, it didn't go over there all the way, I'll just take my paintbrush. I'll dry it off. Pick up off my mat, if you're using a mat, and just kind of go on it. And because, well, the paint's not all the way dry yet so of course it's going to run a little bit but this has the prettiest shimmer I'm going to get more colors of this now sometimes when I do this and like I said you want to leave it dry in between if it doesn't bother you that a little bit of it runs like that it you know but if, I like grungy and I like, and like I said, when you rip it up, it really doesn't matter. But if you want to use it, you know, for card or something to that effect, let me show you the bling that this has. Let's see if you can see it. I don't know why my light's all funky today. The sun keeps coming out and then it goes back in. Right there. Can you see that shine? That came from that spray. That is an awesome spray. I gotta get new, more colors of that. So then you have another piece. Now, do you wanna add, like, do you wanna have a bolder, you know, bolder thing on here, you know, or do you wanna leave it like this? So now you have, you know, you have this, which we have the pink that coordinates with that. We have this color. So you see, like, we're going. Now, the next one I'll probably do. Um, I don't know why my camera is so. I always block myself into a corner when I'm working, but the lighting is really weird today um but now we're starting a theme of our papers do you see what i'm saying so we have this um which is the and then we have this one and then we have this one so then i would probably go 
from here and do something with um, like red, like the reds and the orange. And, you know, you just kind of go and make your own set. And if you only want to have five papers or you want to have 10 people, whatever you want to do and just sit, you can take um, your die cuts and you can, you know, put them on. You can try and think what else you can do. What else I, w I would do? Besides here, my dog barks. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, you can spray alcohol on this and leave it sit, and, and it'll get a cool, like, this kind of thing. Where it kind of, see how it ran because of the water? So, there's all kinds of great pages to do. I hope you guys do this, and I hope this made sense to y'all. And I'm going to go because my dogs are barking like crazy. So, hope you have a great day. And if you have any questions, just let me know. And uh, if you want to see more of these, I will do more. Like I said, I have just, you know, let me have your email address and I'll send you the PDF of the ones I've made. Um, or you can go back in my videos and see the ones that I made videos of that I show, you know, in each packet. And... And it's just so much fun to do. And so, I mean, this is pinks and yellows and oranges and reds. And you can do, you know, purples and, and light blues. And, I mean, you can go all over the map with these colors and really just make beautiful papers. And, like I said, do an RIK for someone um, where, you know, they're getting, you know, pe people that can't afford to go out all the time and buy papers. And you're just making handmade you know, pattern paper for them so they can sit and play and, you know, and you can also, I've made them into art journals before too. You know, you fold these, you know, or get the bigger pieces of watercolor paper and then I would uh, fold them in half and do all that. So there's so much fun and so much to do. So I hope that that helps you guys out a little bit and um, you understand a little bit more. Like I said, I could sit here and play all day and make 3 million papers. Um, but that is essentially how you do it. And if you use watercolor, you just be more conscious of the fact that, you know, it's going to reactivate with something wet. Oh my God, my friggin' dogs. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.